Oh, okay. Hi there. Welcome to Ansible Fest 2021. Uh, thank you for joining this session on how to automate your disaster recovery test with Red Hat's Ansible Automation Platform. My name is June Paik. I'm a senior solutions architect for Red Hat specializing in Ansible. So let's get things started. Uh, many organizations plan for disaster and the plan goes something like this. Help, help. Hopefully your company's DR plan does not look like this. So to prevent us from being in this situation, we need to prepare for many types of disasters. So there's fire, power outage, human errors, and there could be regional outages like terrorist attacks, hurricanes, uh, flooding and earthquakes. But most organizations plan for primary data center outage. So to plan for continuity of your business during disasters, we make plans. And many organizations' DR plans are very complex. It involves many people, many applications, many infrastructure elements. But what we want to do in this session is focus on testing. Now, why test DR? You want confirmation that when the disaster hits, your critical applications and services can be recovered in a timely manner. But for some industries, the business is so critical that frequent DR testing is a requirement to stay in business. And yes, that is the case after 9-11. A lot of the federal agencies out there, this particular one I found from the SEC that basically says in a wide scale regional disruption, you need to be able to recover in a timely manner. Um, not only for your services, but possibly for loss of your staff. But to have a high level of confidence that you know, your business will be able to continue, you must perform ongoing robust testing. Never forget 9-11. And you may want to automate that testing. So why Ansible Automation Platform? Ansible is currently the most popular universal automation language. Many experts call Ansible the default automation language. It's great at collaborating across all your teams, integrating with all the tools and services that you already use today. And throughout all different lines of businesses uh, within your organization and for your edge, cloud, and data center. Also to provide consistent governance. Ansible is so good at collaboration and integration that one of our Red Hatters coined the term love glue to describe Ansible. Another Red Hatter also wrote a song about it, and it goes something like this. The love glue, it makes collaboration easier. It's love glue, integration, it's exciting and new. Now come aboard, we're expecting you, the love glue. Well, <laughs> enough of my singing. Let's continue the presentation. As most of you uh, who are attending Ansible Fest already know that Ansible can automate your entire IT footprint. So you can be ensured that Ansible can handle any infrastructure or any application that's part of your DR test. We also have 90 plus certified content collections uh, supporting over 30 different technology partners. This makes Ansible Automation Platform the first on the market enabling end-to-end -end supported automation. Now let's look at a simple DR test scenario. So we have a DR test here with 15 steps. Uh, one of the first steps is to have a uh, sysadmin install web server, firewall, and maybe have them make sure you have the correct content. You also want to have a user confirm that the content is correct. In preparation for a DR test, you want to shut down the normal server. You also want to have the user check to make sure that server is down, declare a disaster, notify everyone, whether through email, Slack, or even ticketing system like ServiceNow. You may also want to have a go or no go decision mechanism for that IT or business exec uh, to have uh, authorization to go into DR tests. Now, once you approve for the DR test, you would basically do the same thing, enabling the web server, 
at the new DR location uh, and confirm with the user or the client uh, to validate that the web server is running at the DR location. And once that test is done, you notify everyone that the DR test has been successful and you wait for the DR test uh, go or no go decision again to go back to normal state and confirm that the DR test is over. And once that's confirmed, uh, you would shut down all the DR web servers, user also checking to make sure that the web server is down at the DR location. Now you're basically enabling normal operation services at the primary data location and then declare every, everything is done. Now, as a project manager, this involved many people, sysadmin, user, client, IT, exec, operations team to kind of notify everyone. So the as a project manager uh, for my website, I contacted Red Hat to see if this whole process can be automated. Now, in short time, working with Red Hat's uh, Ansible team, they were able to successfully automate it. And each one of those tasks that was part of that uh, DR plan, DR test plan, was converted into Ansible playbooks and brought in to the Ansible automation platform as job templates. And using those job templates, uh, you were able to kind of put that in an orderly manner, in an orderly process uh, to create a workflow, a one common single workflow to run your entire disaster recovery test. You could The workflow has um, success, failure, or even an approval node to kind of have a decision, right? Whether you want to go into DR or not into DR, right? So let's time for a demo. Let me bring my Ansible automation platform in. So this is the latest and the greatest Ansible automation platform 2.0 controller. So just like I shown you all the uh, job templates, I have the job templates over here. So this is the workflow with the approval node in it. I'm going to show you the visualizer. And the visualizer actually shows you the workflow. These green lights indicate success, and the red lights indicate run this job in a failure scenario. And sometimes we do want uh, you know, a negative confirmation, right? Like we want to check to make sure that the web server is down, so we actually want a failure. Uh, and then you have an approval node here to uh, see whether we want to go into DR test or not go into DR test, right? So before I launch this job, I want to bring in the two web servers. This is the primary web server, and this is the backup web server. Backup web server is currently down, and the primary web server is up. Now I'm going to launch my job. Let me enlarge this so you can actually see the job running. So the DR web content normal job is currently running, and it is doing a lot. It is actually uh, making sure that the Apache web package is in there, the firewall package is installed correctly. Uh, it's making sure the firewall and the web server is configured correctly, and the actual content is in there. So that's actually completed. Now this is in the process of checking to make sure the web page from a user's point of view is good. And just like how I'm visually checking it here, Ansible is checking that in an automated way. Now we're in the process of shutting down the web server at the primary location. Let's see if it's actually, I'm just hit re reading refresh to make sure and it is down. So I'm confirming that it is down. Now uh, Ansible is checking this is actually from a user's point of view that it's actually shutting down. This, from a server point of view, it checked it. Now it's confirmed that it's down from a user point of view. Now it's waiting for the go or no go decision to whether you should go into DR test or not. Now, if you look at the alerts, you can actually see that uh, Ansible actually sent out an alert. Uh, this alert can uh, go out to either via email or through a Slack channel or through a ticketing mechanism like ServiceNow and let the IT execs or the approvers know that, hey, you need to approve whether uh, you want to go into DR or not, right? Actually, one thing I've been doing is I've been sending email notifications to myself from um, Ansible Automation Platform, and here you could actually see all the jobs that are going on, and you could actually see the uh, approval node right here, right? And if I click on that, 
you'll bring me to this link. I've also been sending it to a Slack channel, right? So you could also send it through a Slack channel and have it uh, go through approval or no approval. And you could actually see that it actually brings me uh, to this web page as well through Slack. So you can actually send a notification. There's a lot of other methods to sending uh, your notifications for. So for this, I'm just going to hit approve. And the procedure should keep going, right? Let's see where I am. Let me go back to that. So right now, it's in the process of bringing up the DR website. OK, the DR website is up. Now it's checking, just like how I'm checking it. Now Ansible is checking it. This is from a user's point of view. This actually did check it from a server point of view. Now the DR test is done. Now it's all, uh, already asking for the next approval, whether, hey, did all the tests pass? Are we ready to go back to normal? And I'm just going to say, yes, approve. And let me go back to this. And now uh, it declared that the test is over. It basically notifies everyone through all the different mechanism, email, Slack, ServiceNow. Now it's ready to shut down the DR because the DR test is over. We need to shut that down so people don't accidentally hit the DR web pages when we're in production. Now this is checking it again from a user's point of view. That did fail, which is good. We want failure. Now we're ready to bring up the web pages in the uh, normal primary website, primary location. OK, there it is. Now it's still continuing because it needs to check from a user's point of view. And then it's going to declare that the job is done and notify everyone that it's done. So I am going to show you some of the details of the playbook. Uh, but before then, one thing I wanted to do is I want to have a fully automated version of this running. Right? I'm just going to schedule it. I'm um, going to add a schedule. I mean, I'm going to say run once. Um, Current time is 2.40, so maybe I'll run it at 2.41, save. I just want to make sure that uh, it's going to get kicked off. OK. The job is running in, in an automated way. Uh, hopefully, the, you're pre-approved for this fully automated way. Uh, so what I, in the spirit of Red Hat, because open source is part of our DNA, I have open source this project. And you could actually see that it says, this DR demo is for Ansible Fest 2021, how to automate your disaster recovery test. Um, I just wanted to show you one, one, like how do I check for a normal app, right? It, I'm actually calling a role called role normal app check. Let me go into the role. And if you look at the task, I'm basically using a URI module to hit the web page. And I want to return the content. I add the content into the web page and within, uh, within the web page variable. And then I check the web page variable, content of the web page variable for a word called normal. And if it's there, it will, have, it will have failed. But this is double negative, but intentionally, it's exactly the way we want it. So I have open sourced the project, and the project is available to you. And let me just go back and check to make sure how the job is running. The job is currently running. Let me see where it's at. OK, the primary server is down. The DR website is up. See, it's actually in the process of checking the DR web, right? When you're 
when you automate your DR test, I know we currently only test maybe once or twice a year, but that's because you have to have schedule so many people and through so many processes, right? But imagine if you're able to automate that, you might be able to run your automated DR test weekly or maybe even daily to kind of make your uh, confirmation that, hey, you know, I just tested my DR test yesterday because I tested every day and it passed. So I'm pretty sure if I have a disaster today, it's going to work, right? So that's really the power of automating your disaster recovery test. You get that confirmation almost on a daily basis, but you really need to automate that to make this work in that way. Well, it looks like it's uh, almost done. Okay, and it's in the process and it normal process is up. And like, again, it notified everyone. And that's the end of the demo. And so hopefully I convinced you that yes, you can automate your entire disaster recovery test with Ansible automation platform. I've given you the link here for every single uh, IT um, operations that you could do like networking, uh, your Linux, Windows, IBM ZOS, VMware storage, your cloud like AWS, Azure, and GCP. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. And with any questions, uh, I'll be attending Ansible Fest. And my email address is jopaik at redhat.com. My name again is June Pei, and I will have this slide presentation and a white paper available to you as a handout. So have a nice rest of the day at Ansible Fest. Talk to you later.